And looks like we are finally here. We finally have these first images from the iconic James Webb telescope as promised a few months ago and as we've discussed in some of the previous videos. And here I guess we're going to have to curb our expectations a little bit. Mostly because these images are really mostly exciting in terms of the scientific potential. Because honestly, if we would compare this image to some of the images from the Hubble telescope, in terms of the visuals, they do look more or less the same. First of all, these images have been processed from the original infrared light to the visual light in order for our eyes to be able to see them. And second of all, these images only took a few hours or maximum a few days to make, whereas in case of Hubble, some of the images that it managed to produce sometimes took weeks and weeks of observations. So in that sense, I don't really blame you if you feel disappointed once you see them in this video. But nevertheless, these images are quite incredible in terms of the scientific potential, and today we're going to be discussing exactly what they are. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to take our first look and do our first analysis of the first five images from the iconic James Webb telescope that has finally begun its operation and is now collecting a lot of data. And the first image that was produced yesterday, in my opinion, is also the most impressive. Currently, this is referred to as the Webb's first deep field. The image that's basically filled with different galaxies, there are actually thousands of galaxies in this image, and some of them have never really been seen before. Something that was only produced after approximately 12 and a half hours of observation. And something that would have taken Hubble telescope at least a few weeks to produce something similar. And there's actually quite a lot to say about this image because there's just so much stuff happening here. So there is going to be a separate video about all of this because there are so many discoveries that can be made just by looking at this image. But in a nutshell, what you're looking at is essentially a galactic cluster. It's the cluster that you can sort of see right here, the bright stars. Now, these particular galaxies are roughly around 4.6 billion years old, and this whole chunk right here is so massive that it ends up producing the gravitational landing effect that's visible as the lens that sort of warps around this area. It becomes a little bit more obvious if you zoom out. And these warped galaxies that you see around the lens, these are essentially some of the most distant objects, at least 13 billion years old. They're actually way behind the uh, central object, and so in this case, their light gets dramatically magnified by the gravitational lens. And in this super impressive image, James Webb is able to reveal their extremely bright cores filled with different stars and even some really distant star clusters along their edges. Now, these are some of the youngest star clusters we've ever seen, and that already is super impressive. And remember, it only took 12 hours of observations. But what you might not realize right away is that some of these galaxies are actually mirrored meaning that the same galaxy appears twice, and some are stretched or are scattered in some other way. And obviously, the redder the object or the more orange the object, the farther away it is from us. So like, for example, some of these galaxies that you see right here, especially this one, seem to be super far away. And in this image here, you can kind of see that there is a really interesting spiral galaxy right next to another interesting spiral galaxy that seems to be super far away as well. With I think this right here being one of the farthest objects seen in this image. But in this case, it's not just the visual representation of the image that's important. It's also the various amount of spectra coming from all of these objects, which can then allow scientists that are going to be publishing papers about all of this to figure out what these galaxies are made out of and to basically analyze their physical and their chemical properties. So there are so many more details that are available in this image that are unfortunately invisible to our eyes. But like I mentioned, this image is already so impressive that we actually have to dedicate a separate video to it. But let's move on. The second image looks like this. This is a group of galaxies known as the Stefan's Quintet. Five different galaxies that look like they're basically dancing around one another. But for the first time seen in incredible detail. And also obviously photobombed by thousands of different galaxies as well. But in this case, the detail is just absolutely mind-blowing. These particular collisions seem to be causing quite a lot of new stars to be created and quite a lot of active regions with a huge amount of star formation indicated by these red areas in the image. And by itself, this image is actually pretty large. It's approximately one-fifth of the Moon's diameter. And so this is actually a compilation of thousand separate images taken over a much longer period of time. Which is also why so much extra detail is visible everywhere here. Once again, so many more different galaxies. With this galaxy known as NGC 7319, also presenting us with a lot of brightness coming from the central region where the scientists believe there is a really, really massive black hole. 
possibly around 40 billion masses of the Sun. Or about 10,000 times more massive than the one in the center of our own galaxy, Sagittarius A star. But even though there are five galaxies and all five appear to be dancing around one another, the galaxy on the left, NGC 7320, is actually way, way closer to us. This galaxy is about 40 million light years away. But everything else is at least six times farther away, around 300 million light years. Which once again underlines the importance of knowing the distances in space. Even though these galaxies look like they're all connected, they're not. Only four of them are, with the fifth one being in a completely different region. With these two galaxies being also very interesting because they seem to be closest together, producing quite a lot of light on the inside as well. Very likely because they're both cannibalizing each other, absorbing each other's mass, which then falls into the black hole and creates all this brightness. But I'll probably have more to say about this image once more analysis is done and once more data becomes available. Because obviously there's just way too much stuff going on here, so many other galaxies, so many other objects, and so much stuff to discover. So it'll probably take months or even years to actually analyze all of this, discovering what's hiding in these images. And in case you're wondering, here's what the previous Hubble image of all of this looked like. This is from back in 2009. And you might notice slight differences, and that's of course because of the instruments used. Hubble mostly used optical observations, using the same light that our eyes can see. James Webb is an infrared telescope, and so it can actually pierce through a lot more gas and see things that were previously invisible, which is exactly what happened in the next image. The image you see right here, the image of a part of the famous Carina Nebula. The really, really large nebula that's visible from really far away, and it's actually one of the bigger nebula out there. It's actually so big that in the past, in one of the older videos, I've always used this particular nebula to try to discover our part in the Milky Way galaxy, because it's relatively easy to see it from outside of the Milky Way. You can probably find this video somewhere right there or in the description. But this particular part of the nebula is sometimes referred to as the cosmic cliffs, with the, I guess, height of this cliff being roughly around 7 light years. And in this case, this blue light that you can kind of see coming out of the nebula is the blue ionized gas that's being stripped away from inside the nebula by an extreme radiation on the inside. Mostly from different stars and from a lot of star formation that creates all of this radiation that then ends up stripping the gas. In this case, you can kind of see it extending from pretty much everywhere around the cosmic cliffs. And one of the main reasons why it happens here is because the top of the cliff is in this case the location for a lot of newborn stars that end up creating a lot of stellar wind which then generates pressure that pushes all of the other gas away, which can then form into other stars, or maybe become interstellar gas that ends up circulating in the galaxy. But in this case, they discovered hundreds of brand new stars that they've never seen before inside this iconic region known as NGC 3324. Here's one of the previous images that was available to us from a few years ago. And by zooming in into this image, you can actually see these stars yourselves. There are so many of them that it's just absolutely mind-blowing. I think it will take much, much longer than just a few months to discover all of the secrets in this image. And that's because this image alone reveals so many new stellar nurseries that nobody knew existed, but even individual stars that are completely hidden in all of the previous pictures. Once again, because it's seeing things in the infrared, and so the infrared light is able to pierce through soundless gas, while the optical light that was used before usually does not go through some of this gas. You can even see some of the protostellar jets that seem to be shooting out of these younger stars, with some of these jets looking remarkably like the ones usually simulated by various supercomputers. So in terms of scientific potential, this image is just mind-blowing. And some of these stars are some of the youngest stars in the galaxy. They appear as red dots in this particular image. And obviously this being a stellar nursery, it has a lot of these red dots on the inside. And obviously, Four and a half billion years ago, this is kind of what the sun has gone through as well and turned from one of these dots into the solar system that we know today. We'll talk more about all of this in some of the future videos. Then we have this other nebula, and that's of course image number four, the nebula known as the Southern Ring. And if the previous image was showing us the birth of our sun or the sun's history, this is showing us the sun's future. This is a typical nebula created by various sun-like stars once they go from being a red giant into the white dwarf stage. And in this case there are two images because it's taken by two different instruments. The near-infrared camera on the left, 
which reveals clouds and clouds of hydrogen emanating from the center, with the blue haze in this case representing ionized gas. These are the leftovers coming from the star's core. And the right image shown as the mid-infrared instrument observations, where in blue you can actually see various types of hydrocarbons, which seem to be clumping to various types of hydrogen and are very likely creating more complex molecules, which by itself creates so many questions already. You might remember that quote from the iconic Carl Sagan, we are all made out of stardust. This particular image gives this quote even more credibility. This literally showed us that the stardust in this case, from the end of a sun-like star, produces all of the molecules needed for, basically, life somewhere else. Totally mind-blowing, but also so many questions that need answers. In comparison, here's the image from the Hubble telescope. Yeah, definitely not as impressive. And one thing you might notice is that there are actually two stars here, that become even more apparent in the image from the James Webb telescope. And that's because this particular nebula, located about 2500 light years away from planet Earth, is the result of a binary system, two very similar stars to our Sun. Actually, kind of more similar to the Alpha Centauri system, one of our closest neighbors. Oh wait, it's not called Alpha Centauri anymore, it's like righteous Centaurs or something. Anyway, so that system. One of the stars has already become a white dwarf, the other star is still very sun-like. That's kind of what's happening here as well. Although the star that's become the white dwarf could have been actually up to 8 times the mass of the sun, and the current mass is obviously unknown. But that second star is also going to create its own nebula sometime in the future. Which is something that will happen to the Alpha Centauri as well, and something that will also happen to our own sun, although Alpha Centauri A is going to do it much sooner. Not anytime soon though, a few billion years. And so definitely quite a lot of new things to discover here as well, especially about the evolution of stars similar to our own sun. And the last image is not really an image, it's more of a graph. Which I think will be the most disappointing image to everyone, because NASA did mention that they might show us an exoplanet. Now, a lot of scientists knew that it's not going to be an image that resembles something like this. It's not going to be an actual planet. None of the telescopes we have right now are capable of producing this. You would need something way, way, way larger. But they did get the data coming from one of the exoplanets as it was passing in front of the star and as its atmosphere interacted with the light coming from the star and reviewed some of the data about the atmosphere itself. And the planet in this case is this planet simulated in Space Engine, discovered back in 2014, known as WASP-96b. A planet, as you can see from the simulation, that's essentially super super close to its parent star. But it's also extremely different from planet Earth or from anything else we have in the solar system, even though it's known as a sub-Jupiter. Now it's about 1100 light years away from us, and a single orbit here takes approximately three and a half days, but in terms of the actual properties, it's very exotic, it's actually as exotic as it gets. It's about half the mass of Jupiter, it's also approximately 1.2 times larger than Jupiter, and it seems to be much poofier. So essentially it's known as a poofy planet, we've talked about this in one of the older videos. And so in this case, these were purely scientific observations, allowing the scientists to discover distinct signatures of water. Water in this really hot atmosphere, very likely hotter than Venus over 500 degrees Celsius. And so during the six and a half hour observation, the scientists were able to see distinct spectral signs that there was water molecule present in the atmosphere of this planet, which also was the most detailed observation of any atmosphere of any planet ever. Which is really ironic because only a few years ago there was a study that pretty much determined that it would be impossible for this planet to have any clouds and that it would probably have a very clear atmosphere. But these new observations do suggest that there are clouds and they seem to be water clouds. Water clouds that seem to be circulating around the planet. But obviously this is not the first time water clouds or water molecules were discovered around an exoplanet. The most impressive part of course is the fact that all of this took 6 hours, only 6 hours, and the fact that these particular molecules were detected when all of the other telescopes failed to find them. Which once again highlights how absolutely ridiculous James Webb is in terms of its observational abilities. But unfortunately no actual image. And so technically I guess NASA released 4 images and 1 graph. But still very impressive, very exciting, mostly for scientists, but it also means that there are going to be more videos about this discussing some of these observations and discoveries in way more detail, but also explaining why they are so exciting 
in the next few weeks in future videos. And by the way, in case you're wondering, here's the location of all of these images in relation to the rest of the night skies as visible from planet Earth. So maybe subscribe. On that note, thank you for watching, share this with someone who loves learning about space, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.